back to the Flat Thunder channel. My name's Andy, and today we're going to install a vented heater here in this basement. In this process, we're going to have to run a new uh, gas supply line over in this area here, and then we're also going to tie into this existing vent pipe for this old school uh, gas fired furnace. Stick with us, I'll show you how it's done. New to me, uh, Empire branded uh, vented gas heater. It's model RH-35 and it has a rated output capacity of 35,000 BTU. Uh, it's a natural gas unit. This is a new to me unit. It was a used unit that dad picked up uh, at a sale and it looks like it's in pretty good shape but it does need cleaned up a little bit. So we already cleaned the cover up these louvers, these just take forever. You gotta clean the inside, the back side. It's just really time consuming. I already did that off camera. Look inside, uh, you know, we have a little bit of dirt build up in here. And then we're also gonna have to investigate the blower motor to uh, make sure the blower motor is good. It feels a little snug. Uh, so we're gonna disassemble that and test it before we permanently install it and make sure that's running okay and the bearings are free. You can see behind this black panel, this is where all the combustion takes place, and that's vented out the backside. This is a perfect job for my Simple Green uh, cleaner. I always keep some of this around. Uh, it's not uh, overly harsh, and it does a great job of cleaning things. This is the blower unit for the uh, heater, and the squirrel cage feels relatively firm, kind of hard to spin, and it's pretty dirty in there. So uh, we're going to try to remove this whole unit from here, clean it up, and bench test this motor and lube the bearings if possible. Label these wires with a little bit of white electrical tape so they don't mix them up. Probably doesn't matter, but you never know. Might make it spin backwards or something goofy. These little two side ones here on the bottom first. Mounts this angle bracket to the side wall. Looks like we can just feed the cord through here, we don't even have to disconnect it. Now we just got a whole ton of dirt, dust, and everything in this, so we'll clean all that out of there. Looks like somebody's using it in a wood shop. There we go, that dirt and off of there. I think I'll even try to pop this squirrel cage off of here. Small sit through right there. Turns incredibly hard. This looks uh, brand new. Now, this this concerns me how stiff this turns. So, um, this is hooked up for a thermal switch. So, whenever the uh, combustion chamber gets hot, it'll warm up and tell this to turn on. I think we can just uh, disconnect the switch and wire it in directly to this wire. Disconnect it here and plug it in there and then it should uh, operate by plugging the cord in. Yep, 
Yeah. So if we just plug the main power wire in, this uh, blower motor should energize. And nothing. Afraid this blower motor might uh, might have bit the dust here. That is a gasket or some sort. Vibration isolator, maybe. Super brittle. So it looks like these little clips uh, hold the end on. Lift up. That wasn't good. So I'm pretty sure this thing's just shot. That's not good. Well, like most things, we ran into a roadblock, and this blower motor is just complete junk. Uh, the bearings are all shot in it, and whatever was inside there, whether those were spacers or some type of brushes that were super brittle, I definitely broke those. So. This is complete trash. Uh, I ordered a new one, which I hope is the correct replacement. It was identified as the correct replacement for this RH35 Empire uh, heater. So we'll hold on to this one until we get the new one. Uh, it was about $73 uh, off the internet, and hopefully it's the same one. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and continue trying to install this unit. We can operate it and do everything with it uh, without the blower motor and install the blower motor at a later date. Uh, that just helps circulate the air. Everything else on it will work just fine uh, without this. This is uh, going to be the mechanical room of the basement, so it's always going to be uh, open utilities. That way it's uh, easy to maintenance and not closed in. So obviously we have our uh, hot water heater here. Uh, it was always vented to a pipe that's inside of the chimney and then this is the vent pipe that's always been installed on this horizontal furnace here. This is a little bit unique and a little weird. Uh, this is a rather old uh, gas forced air furnace and I believe this unit was upstairs, uh, way upstairs in the attic and somebody decided to move it down here in the basement for some reason so I'm not sure why uh, but ultimately this is all going to go away uh, it's just a matter of finding the money and redoing all of the duct work and purchasing a brand new air handler this is the gas heat supply line for the hot water heater I'll take you around to the other side but we're going to tap in here for a gas supply uh, and with any steel pipe plumbing, you need to make sure you hook everything up such that you can tighten all the fittings. So we'll have to walk through this and logically think, how can we install these fittings so we can spin them all uh, and get it in place. Probably have to start at this end. Start at this end. Get this NRT, obviously turn your gas off first. Get this NRT and then work our way all the way around, piece by piece. Uh. Yeah, I think that's gonna fit in there pretty nice. So now there is a vent that comes out of the back of this and this needs to be vented so it can expel the uh, 
the bad gases from combustion uh, like carbon dioxide we need to expel those outside and to do that we need to go from here and T into this pipe it needs to be a nice upward angle so we're gonna have to take a look at that and see what that setup's gonna look like before we finalize the gas line I have a full flow Y and that's spelled W-Y-E this was very difficult to find uh, mainly because it's an oddball size this whole pipe is 5 inch and therefore this has to be a 5 inch Y and it's not as popular there's 4 inch and there's 6 inch and there's 8 inch the 5 inch is a little difficult to find with that I had to buy an adapter. This goes from five down to three, and they're the same size. So on these fittings, you always want to have the waterfall effect, where every fitting uh, in the direction of flow goes into the next. So this fitting needs to go inside of this wad. So we'll have to go get our crimper tool See if we can crimp this such that it'll go inside there to create that waterfall effect. If you've never dealt with it before, this is a new section of three inch duct pipe and it comes open and it has a hemmed seam here where you clip it. This part goes underneath there. It, this part goes underneath this uh, latch here and it snaps into place over the whole length. Now, if you leave it open and don't clip it in place until you know the exact length that you want, it makes it a whole lot easier to cut. You can cut it after it's clipped, it's just easier to unroll and then cut. So, I'm going to estimate the length. Uh, obviously, you want it to go over this. I didn't think this would fit. An oval shape. And this three inch pipe will actually pop over that oval. That's really odd, but it does fit. In a pipe, we'll have to cut the length of our elbow, which we'll manipulate to the correct angle. And then here's our uh, adapter to go from three inch to five inch. And that's obviously not the right angle, so. These uh, fittings swivel, so you can adjust the angle. Might be a little bit better. This old vent pipe uh, is wrapped in some type of insulating material, uh, which the the given age of this uh, furnace, this very well could be a, an asbestos-based material. So we're going to go ahead and mask up, and we're going to try to take this off without uh, damaging it and without disrupting it, basically unroll it very carefully with the proper protective gear on and bag it and dispose of it at the proper facility. Uh, you don't want to mess around with asbestos. You definitely don't want to be ripping it up or shredding it or uh, just tossing it around. So be careful with that. Our Y, and then this is our adapter, which they're both the same size. So we need to crimp this piece so it can go inside of that piece. To do that, take our crimp tool. This is a Malco, Malco brand crimp tool, and it creates little wrinkles uh, all the way around. 
it'll make it look similar to this. Now it's crimped and this should fit inside of here. Like a glove, look at that. I think this is one of those instances where we're just gonna have to wing it and deal with whatever we come up with. I think we're just gonna take this guy, pick a rough spot up here, mark it, cut it, and then start reassembling it. And then we'll just have to adjust that over there uh, with a coupling and we get what we get. This isn't really a scientific process for me because this whole big fully vented furnace uh, hopefully will go away someday but right now it works really good uh, and again we have to redo all the ducts and we don't really want to spend the uh, you know five five to eight thousand dollars right now at this moment so I'm gonna try to make this whole girl last. Somewhere around in here and here, marks on the other side, is where we need to section it to put our Y in. So I'm going to cut it on the top side, get our Y in, and see if we can adjust this such that it doesn't have this double lap here. And right now we're just waiting for the furnace to kick off so we can turn the switch off and get this disassembled and then reassembled. You always want to just drag a file across it real quick. Take care of all the burrs so you don't cut yourself too bad. Helps to get a really good uh, pair of snips. I like to use the, these are Midwest Industries. These are offset cut, uh, I believe right hand. But it's got the big offset jaw. You can cut on one side, and if you cut it up, turn it upside down, you can cut on the other. But a good pair of snips makes a huge difference. Right now, I'm just rough cutting a piece, and we're going to try to see if we can get this lined up because we have to get this hooked up rather quickly.
Here's our Y pipe. Here's our reducer. And we cut a short piece here to traverse over this way. We have our adjustable elbow. Then we just cut a vertical piece so we can mate in here. Keep a nice continuous upward curve. So to get this guy into that, I have to move the whole heater this way a little bit, tilt, tilts it so the pipe is down far enough and then get it fed in there ever so gingerly. Juggling match here. All right, it didn't turn out too bad, but I did end up moving the whole unit towards us a little bit. And that way to get the geometry of this correct. Now, if this was permanent, I would work with this and move it around more to get a better angle to get this heater shoved back further. But uh, as I mentioned, right now we're in a hurry. Uh, we need to get the furnace turned back on and to do that we need to have all the vent work hooked up properly before we can turn it back on so we're getting really close you need to check all the joints uh, put some screws in and then we should be good to turn the furnace back on Topped it off with this aluminum tape. Here she is. All vented. And I need to get the main furnace back on before it gets too cold upstairs. We have all the vent tubing tied in and reinstalled on the main furnace. Uh, the new auxiliary heater is in place. And most importantly, we didn't get yelled at. I'm impressed and scared at the same time. So. We're going to get this heater fired up before it gets too cold upstairs and you start hearing some yelling. We don't want that. Better yet, we dialed the heat up to 72, turned the furnace off, and we're able to get it wrapped up and turned back, down, back on before the temperature fell below the normally set uh, 69 or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. We got our weapons of trade here, a couple pipe wrenches and the crescent wrench there you use that to turn off this shut off valve here which uh, turns off the feed to the hot water tank so i turned this off double check to make sure the pilot light was off so we know we're not going to leak and now we're going to remove this nipple and then start adding in our pieces this is the pipe joint compound that i use don't forget to test all of your pipe fitting connections with a soapy water solution or a leak test product. I tend to overdo it on the uh, pipe dope mainly because I don't want to have to take any of this back apart if it's leaking just to put a little more on so whatever squirts out the top will wipe off have your pipe set up all laid out so you know how it's going to go together and again the trick is making sure you have it so you can spin the fitting Before you get it tight, I need to you need to know the angle, especially in fittings that uh, need to be at a certain angle. We want this one to come out approximately this way to mate up with the rest of the pipe. So you need to keep that in mind before you start tightening it. That way uh, you don't get stuck in a jam sometimes.
So this part I just reinstalled as a three inch nipple with a cap and that is a drain or a catch. So anything that would come down the main pipe, it will continue and go straight and get caught in this catch that you can drain instead of going down into your appliance. Back here, I have uh, this piece, but this 45 is going to go back behind here. So I want to make sure I install this before I put the pipe in. So I have to make sure it can spin back there. This end will have to spin back there because I wouldn't be able to uh, reach in and tighten it behind the water heater. Chinese garbage. These things have zero grip and the head just doesn't doesn't want to rock. Starting to get pissed. That's how it's supposed to work. These Taiwanese fellows got this service wrench. It works. This thing's a piece of trash. Good 
got our tea in, we put our drain cap catch back in, came over, elbowed, we're in between the wall and the water heater there. We can bolt it to the wall for support. Hello, can you hear me? I'm trying to find you. Almost there. Believe it or not, those channel locks work better than that pipe wrench did. So we're gonna have to take that Chinese specialty apart and try to fix it or just throw it right in the recycle pile. I don't know. See how annoyed I get with it. You buy a tool, you shouldn't have to work on it. Getting all nice and toasty back here. Seriously, it's way too hot to be back here. I actually have the heater off at the moment while I'm recording this. So if you made it this far, you know that we got the heater installed, uh, but we we're missing the blower motor still yet. Uh, that's on order. I'm going to go ahead and install that later, but until then, you can enjoy the added heat and add the security of this backup heater for this winter. Uh, season. If you have any questions or comments for me, don't forget to leave those in the section below. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to hit that subscribe button over here. We got a lot more video content coming out. Uh, new video every Wednesday. Got my fluke uh, multi or my fluke uh, infrared thermometer here. I'm gonna fire up the uh, heater and I'm going to scan the case just so you can get an idea of how hot it is. And I will include that video footage at the very end after this. 250. So this is definitely something that you don't want to touch. So stay well away from this cover.